Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So Bobbi Brown came out with a new camouflage collection and I've purchased a couple things from that collection. I hauled one thing and then two things I just recently picked up to kind of round everything out. So I picked up the eye and cheek palette. This is the outer packaging. Isn't that great? I just love this packaging. And this is what it looks like. So there are six eyeshadows and one highlighter it's it's pretty deep i remember swatching it and thinking it's pretty deep but it's meant to be a highlighter so we'll go with that and then i picked up two of the luxe eyeshadows this one is called uh incandescent and this one is called jungle and this one has a greenish kind of tint and i love how the marbling effect looks like camouflage in there so if you're interested in seeing me apply these things, give you my thoughts on these three pieces, then just keep on watching. All right, I was so excited when I saw this collection come out for Bobbi Brown, or at least when I saw preview pics of it on Instagram, I was like immediately drawn to it. I'm kind of a big fan of camouflage and I thought the color scheme was really beautiful. So I'm having a similar um, aesthetics issue, similar to an issue that I had with the Natasha Denona Safari palette in that you call something camouflage or you call something safari, I, I would think that you're gonna have a lot more green in there. And at least the safari palette had that nice, uh, I think it's called Savannah? Savannah? Yeah, I think it's called Savannah. It had that nice Savannah shade it's in the upper right hand corner. And it was a cool tone, but at least it was like an olive, a deep olive green. These are just khakis and taupes. So I was a little bit disappointed because I thought maybe these two shades over here were gonna be a little bit more olive in tone, maybe even this one have more of a green undertone, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But they definitely made up for it in this jungle <laughs> shade. There is uh, a lot of green in there and I'm wondering if it will actually kind of translate to my eyes because sometimes these like duochrome, multi-chrome types of shadows, like you only end up seeing like just one or two of the colors, not all of them, but we'll see. We will definitely play. So I have all of my base products down. I have uh, foundation, concealer, and loose powder down. I even did my eyebrows. And so I wanted to go in and play with this highlighter a little bit. So let me go ahead and swatch this for you. But here is the highlight. And it's a little bit, I think, deep for me to use as just a highlight. So what I'm planning on doing is just applying it back here, kind of where my contour would kind of end towards my hairline, since it is kind of dark. And we'll see. We'll see how it works. I'm actually going to go in with this Surratt uh, angled brush. I'm going to pick up just a little bit, knock some off. Go in back here. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, pigment in there. I'm gonna try a different brush, actually. I'm actually gonna try my Sonia G Sculpt 2 brush. I wanna see how reflective it is, because it seems really reflective when you swatch it. And this brush has a little bit more of like a concentrated effect. Wow. I think it's a touch, it's a touch too deep for my skin tone. I think it's okay if I leave it far back on my face. I really don't wanna bring it, not even this close, probably went a little crazy, probably wanna leave it back here and leave the brighter highlight blush situation for kind of more center on my face. But I think it's okay, you know, I think I can pull it off. I just don't think it's my ideal highlight shade. There it is on that cheek. So that is the highlighter shade in this palette here. I probably should have added some bronzer on first, but I really wanted to get a sense of the tone of this and see by itself if it was too dark or not. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my favorite bronzers. This is a great matte, straightforward kind of bronzer. This is Bobbi Brown's Stone Street Bronzer. Actually, I actually haven't used this in a while, but I really, really love it. I'm gonna go in with my Sonia G Sculpt One brush. Just place it kind of underneath where I have the highlighter, you know, obvious, obvious places for bronzer. All right, so bronzer is added. I don't feel like I need blush. I think the between the bronzer and the highlight being a little bit deeper than usual, I feel like my cheek color is satisfied. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig into these eyeshadows now. So before I dig in, let me actually go ahead and swatch these six shadows for you. So I'll start with these three over here. All three of these are 
matte. And I have to admit, they feel a little bit hard and dry in the pan, but with matte shadows, it's so hard to tell with swatches, I think mattes especially, how they'll actually perform. And then here are the three over here. So this one is like a satin, a glitter, and a matte. Here's the satin, the glitter, and the matte. So no, they're not swatching great, but we will have to actually put them on the lids, I think, to really figure out whether or not they're good. So I'm gonna start with my Sonia G Worker One Brush, and I'm gonna go into this matte shade, this mid-tone matte shade here. Start there, apply it to my outer corner here. Actually a very similar shade to my skin tone. I don't really see it showing up. Okay, you can, I think, barely see that color. So why don't we go straight into this darker color here at the bottom. And I'm gonna stick with my Worker One brush here and focus that on the outer corner here. Um, this looks a little patchy. Let's see if we can build it up and smooth it out a little bit. Don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but it is a little bit patchy there. And I think I mentioned this when I hauled this palette that I have very hit or miss results with Bobbi Brown shadows. I feel like the shadows that come in the palettes, I haven't really gotten along with. The ones that they sell in the single pans, I've gotten along with really, really well. So I'm not sure if the formula is different or if I'm just kind of picking up colors that work for me. I don't know. I don't really know what uh, what the deal is, but I, f I was really hoping to kind of uh, change my history with Bobbi Brown shadows with this palette, but so far this one is acting kind of like the other palettes in that the shadows are just really kind of hard and, and patchy. Um, don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with a fluffier blending brush with the same color, but on my other eye, I wanna see if maybe uh, I'm using the wrong brush. So I'm just picking a little bit up. Even for like very hard pressed shadows, they're very easy to pick up on the brush. So that doesn't seem to be the issue. And I'm just gonna pat and slowly work in. Let's try a little bit more. It's still just, um, it's kind of stubborn. Like it won't, it won't blend nicely. It almost feels like it's very sticky to my lid and I don't have any primer down. I just have a little bit of concealer and I have loose powder all over my lid. So it is a very smooth canvas to start with. And for most of the shadows that I use, this is fine. I don't think these are like the worst shadows I've ever used, but they're not amongst my favorites. They're just patchy. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me just try one more color. I want to try the satin formula um, because that one actually finger swatched pretty well. So I want to give that a shot. I'm going to go in with my Chikahoto GSN 9 brush. I think I'll just brush this just a little bit over the center and the edge of a uh, of that darker matte shade. This shadow seems to perform pretty well, I have to say. It's very pigmented. Goes on a bit more smoothly than the matte. It's blending out nicely. So yeah, the satin shadow I think is a little bit better, but it's still not fantastic. It's still not fantastic. All right, well, I'm even more excited now to try these Lux eyeshadows. So I'm gonna try this jungle color because it's just so amazing. Let me go ahead and actually swatch it for you and we can get a sense of, wow, it's actually a lot darker than I thought. Oh my gosh, that is dramatic. So here is jungle. And then here is incandescent. And this is the pinky, peachy one.
All right, I'm gonna go into this jungle shade with my uh, Sonia G Builder 2 brush. This is the one that mimics a fingertip. I'm gonna just shimmy this over the top. And I chose this Builder 2 brush because this brush really picks up like hard baked kind of products. And this is definitely kind of like a baked eyeshadow. It picks up those powders the best. So anyway, thought this would be a good choice. And I'm just going to pat this. Wow. Ooh, how cool. That's pretty. That is really beautiful. This shadow just stole the show. I'm just going to put this all over my lid now. <laughs> this is a great, great, like one shadow smoky eye. So I think someone had mentioned that they had a lot of fallout with the shadow. I'm actually not positive if they were talking about this shadow or the shadows in here, but I do want to say I have very little fallout, but when I use brushes like this, these kinds of brushes, especially with natural hair, they're very dense. They really like grip onto the powder. So with like synthetic bristles or fluffier brushes, when you sweep the powder on, it's really, it's gonna get everywhere. I mean, that's sort of the point for those fluffier brushes. It's supposed to like really um, dissipate all of the, the pigment. Um, these are supposed to really concentrate it. This is like the perfect holiday one shadow look. So I had no intention of doing such a smoky eye today, but gotta go with it. So I'm gonna take my Builder One brush. So this is like a smaller version of the brush that I just used. And I'm going to go into this jungle color and smoke out my lower lash line because I look a little top heavy right now. <laughs> All right, well, that's the jungle shade. My goodness, that is incredible. So much impact. So much more than I thought. Let me go ahead and finish off the rest of my eye makeup and I'll be right back. All right, so I finished off my look with the Marc Jacobs Overt uh, Highliner Gel Liner. And then I used one of my newer lipsticks. This is from Tom Ford. This is the new Satin Matte Formula and this is in the color La Nudite. So it's a very nude, like a little slightly warm leaning color. And I lined my lips with the Pat McGrath lip liner in contour, which is also another kind of like warm toned nude color. All right, so let's sum up my thoughts on the three pieces that I have. So these Lux eyeshadows are beautiful. Now you saw that I only use this on my eyes and this is the, f the effect that we got, but you saw me swatch this and I suspect that this is gonna have just as much impact as this. This. Also, if you missed out on the Chantecaille uh, Luminous Eye Color in Soleil, pick this up. It literally is like an exact dupe for that, even down to the actual formula. They're both baked and they both have a very similar feel. I love these Lux eyeshadows. I think these are really wonderful. Now, the eye and cheek palette. I think the highlighter is really pretty. The tone is probably a little bit too deep for me. So if you have a more medium skin tone, medium to deeper skin tone, I think this would work for you. And in fact, I think this entire palette would work really nice for you because the colors are very, very deep and they are pigmented, but I don't get along with the Bobbi Brown matte shadows quite as much as I do with the shimmer. And this one I played with a little bit more, but the matte shadows are just, to me, they're very stubborn. They're very, very dry and they act very, very patchy on my eyelids. And again, that's the experience I've had with most of the Bobbi Brown eyeshadows that I've purchased in palettes. The single matte shadows like these, I have Camel, which is number five. And I also have Banana, number three. This you can see I've beaten up quite a bit. These are wonderful. I love these matte shadows and I don't know if they're a different formula or if they just, I don't know, just behave differently because they're in this bigger pan. I don't know what the deal is. Um, and then the packaging gets an A plus for me. It's really sturdy, it's hard plastic, it has a nice weight to it. It's not heavy, but it doesn't feel cheap at all. And there's a nice mirror on the inside. And this is about as far back as it goes. And so it's great for travel because you can just sort of sit it up 
and do your makeup. So all in all, I like this collection or what I've purchased from collection, but I don't, I'm not in love with this. I'm not in love with this palette, uh, but I am in love with these two singles. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe down below if you haven't already. Also, don't forget my giveaway is still open uh, through October 5th. So enter it if you are interested and I will see you in my next video.